This is San Pedro, a prison where no guards dare venture inside. There are 20 of us and more than 2,000 of them. Behind those walls, pure anarchy. A lawless place where only the strongest survive. I am a murderer. I killed a cop. Physical and psychological insanity. I'm afraid of losing myself here. Anything and everything is available in here. We have all the drugs in here that you can get outside. This is San Pedro, one of the toughest prisons in the world. In San Pedro, the prisoners are left entirely to themselves. The state stays out of it. Unoccupied watchtowers, no guards, no police, nothing. Instead, prison bosses rise from the ranks of the prisoners. Murderers, violent criminals and drug lords, they govern the eight districts of San Pedro. They make sure that the completely dilapidated prison town here in the middle of the city, located in one of the best neighborhoods of La Paz, doesn't get completely out of hand. Within the walls, inmates move about freely, junkies, rapists, and murderers, all together. It was back in 2002 that the government made the unusual decision to leave the prison and its inmates entirely to their own devices. Since then, the inmates take care of everything themselves. Government sells this as a progressive and integrative system. In reality, this dirt poor country is just trying to save on prison costs. The state doesn't take care of anything anymore. The government has cast San Pedro aside. In plain terms, the inmates take care of everything. They cook their own meals, they build the cells and try to keep the prison from falling apart completely, patching up as best they can what is in deep disrepair. A city within a city full of outlaws. Women bring in the goods, bread, cocaine, and building materials. The prisoners rule supreme inside, and kings among thieves and murderers are the bosses. They alone determine who gets what, who lives where within these walls. An absurd and tough microcosm, abiding by its own rules and laws. For this is San Pedro, one of the toughest and most dangerous prisons in the world. Everybody knows it here. The new guys know it. Carlos knows it. A little. What should I say? I'd have it easier someplace else. This place, this is just weird. Scary. Some of the other guys have already told me stories. I kind of know what to expect. This isn't the first time in prison for Carlos but it's the first time for him in San Pedro. On the outside, he's a tough guy. Only time will tell how tough he really is on the inside. Within the walls of San Pedro, a few meters more until that last gate, the gate to hell. The gate where police oversight ends and the rule of the delegados begins. A free man when he came in, once the door closes behind him, Carlos is a free man no longer. He is a prisoner of San Pedro a prison which no guard enters voluntarily. The prisoners rule behind bars, specifically the prison bosses, the so-called delegados. Victor Hugo Mendoza, a name every newbie would do well to remember, for he is the boss of all bosses here. Convicted of four murders, he is the head of the delegados. Send over the disciplinas. Gather round and bring me the new guys. Mendoza carefully takes in each newcomer. As prison king, he has the first word, and he has the last word. The new one here is only a prisoner when I decide he's a prisoner. I explain the rules of conduct in this penitentiary. This helps avoid problems later on. Problems that may not only make the newcomer's life difficult, but could make his survival here impossible. The delegados escort Carlos in, leading him up to the prison boss. Informes 
Is this the new man? It's him, boss. All right. Gallegos, Luis Carlos Agosto, listen to me carefully. These are the rules of this prison. In this prison, the inmates make the rules themselves. And the most important thing here is, above all else, respect. Everybody listens to the delegados. In San Pedro, there are a total of eight quarters. The bosses decide who lives where. Once you are assigned your quarter, it is impossible to change. Each quarter has a certain reputation. One quarter houses the ones who rule, the powerful. In another quarter, the fixers. Only if Carlos can scrape together enough money will he survive. His sleeping area, his food, everything has a price tag on it. Totally intimidated by now, the newcomer is too scared to ask any questions. The delegados assess him according to his crime, his age, his sentence. The boss gives the signal to take him away. Carlos himself has no idea what is going to happen to him. The delegados lead him down one of the many dark passages. Luis Carlos Argusto Gallego is from now under the rule of the highest ranking criminal. This is the last time we can film him. A day later, Carlos is not allowed to talk to us anymore. His body is covered with bruises. How it happened and why, no one outside these walls will ever find out. San Pedro is probably the only prison in the world where the policemen and guards do not enter. In fact, the prison guards don't care what happens on the inside. An easy way to get by. He who sees nothing, knows nothing. The power of the police force here does not extend beyond a four by four meter area. The area where visitors come in, show their IDs, are security checked and escorted through the door into the actual prison area. That's it. Police Chief Christian Sajines has been working here for eight years now. As chief of police, he should have control of the entire prison, but San Pedro is different. The delegados let us know if something has happened in the prison. They also determine the penalties for crimes. We act as an executive power only. Sajines is pragmatic, frighteningly so. There are 20 of us and 2,000 of them, 20 police officers for more than 2,000 prisoners. We're powerless. We can't do anything. How helpless the police really are is documented by this video filmed in 2014. It shows one of the worst riots. Riots like that happen all the time. All the police can do is watch and make sure the riots and unrest do not spread beyond the walls into the city. There just aren't enough of us. The situation is intolerable. This concept was established many years ago. But at that time, there were fewer prisoners, and now circumstances have changed. I think that this here will end very badly. In the event of an emergency, we can do nothing. An absurd microcosm and a hopelessly outnumbered police chief. Power to the majority, power to the prisoners, especially the delegados, all convicted felons. Their favorite hangout, the parapet from which they can see over the entire prison area. These men are respected and feared at the same time, because when it comes down to it, it is they who decide over life and death. First and foremost, Victor Hugo Mendoza, who has climbed the ranks from a quadruple murderer to prison boss. He rules through his delegados. One of them, Valentino Maiori. The distinguishing feature of delegados, black tracksuits. Each delegado is responsible for one of the quarters. If there are problems, they are supposed to intervene. 
but they also carry out administrative tasks of a certain kind. Every prisoner has an entrance fee to pay. It's our job to get it. Yes, it's true. Each prisoner pays to be here. The prison bosses require a kind of protection money, 150 bolivianos or 21 US dollars. A lot of money in a country where the average income is $6.30 a day. That fee does not cover your sleeping area though. Valentino himself lives on about five square meters. He was arrested for marijuana trafficking. He was a pothead and still is. Not a problem in San Pedro. Drugs are everywhere. Anything you can get outside, you can get it in here too. The most popular drug by far, pasta basica de cocaína. Cocaine in its first stage, it's smoked. Drugs, one of the biggest problems of San Pedro. Especially one quarter they call the drugs quarter, but honestly, drugs are everywhere in San Pedro. Approximately 60% of the inmates are drug addicts. They chew on coca leaves soaked in chemicals. They sniff crack or pure cocaine, smoke heroin or the infamous pasta basica de cocaina. Particularly popular because it's cheap, a byproduct of cocaine manufacture. The dangerous thing about it, in addition to psychosis and paranoia, it suppresses hunger. Users either starve to death or go mad. The obvious and outright drug dealing, excessive consumption and the misery of drug addicts, all this happens under the watchful eyes of the delegados. Nobody says anything in front of the camera, but many claim it's the delegados who control the drug business here. He who has the drugs has the power. San Pedro as a microcosm reflects the problem of the whole country. Experts estimate one in three Bolivians regularly takes drugs. 21 tons of cocaine alone were seized last year, and nobody knows the exact figure or amount of cocaine that wasn't seized by law enforcement. However, Experts estimate cocaine exports last year rose from 290 to 420 tons. One gram of cocaine costs you between 10 and $20 in La Paz. A country on a permanent high, wired, a land lost in drugs and crime.